Okay, so today I wanted to do some collision physics with AI art. And so I'm building out this game. It kind of has a Paper Mario type style where everything is flat, but then we're kind of building it out into a 3D space. Uh, so I need it to be able to collide with those objects. And so we need to build some colliders. And in particular, we need to figure out how to get from these planar geometries into the colliders. The Blender component is actually very similar to the last one. So we just have to kind of cut out all of the objects. The one thing that's really important in this one is to make sure Sure that all of the vertexes are centered around zero so we actually do need to move them while in edit mode and not in object mode if we move them in object mode that'll cause us some issues later so that was a mistake that i made and i had to fix it a few times i also wanted to make an update about one of the mistakes that i made last time so last time there was a lot of flickering and in a few of my other videos there's been a little bit of flickering i found out one of the mistakes that i commonly make is that the gpu range or uh kind of like the dynamic range of floats that you can give to the gpu is too large so if you give it kind of like i think it's about seven to eight orders of magnitude in size difference, it can actually cause the GPU to kind of try switching out numbers really quickly and that can lead flickering. So this is my first attempt. So you'll notice that there's some floating boxes. And so that was the problem that we were just talking about with the edit mode versus object mode. So if you move things in edit mode, it moves the vertexes. If you move it in object mode, it'll move the positions object. So if the vertexes aren't centered around the origin of the object, then when you're putting the colliders down, you'll put them down at the object position and there'll be an offset with where the vertex positions are. So just making sure that you're moving things in the vertex or the edit mode of Blender when you're moving objects so that they are centered around the origin is a very helpful thing to do. So this is showing it working with all the hitboxes in place. So there's still a few bugs where I have to move some objects up and down. I need to get a little bit more disciplined with the Y axis. So I, right now, some of my objects are kind of floating up and down. There's a few things with the colliders on the arrows, but for the most part, this is functioning. So we have, um, oh, and also the arrows are rotated the wrong direction. But for a starting place, this is all right. So we have all the colliders in place and there are a few kind of issues where some of our colliders are not quite the right size, but if you make them too large, then you end up with a bunch of invisible walls. So I might need to kind of decrease the size of tree colliders a little bit. There's a lot of little nitpicky things, but for the most part, this is functioning how I was expecting it to function. Okay, so I want to talk a little bit about the structure of the game and what I envision it to be. And so this is going to be the aspirational goal. So I kind of envision it as being something similar to Slay the Spire, but with physical cards rather than the digital cards. So we'll be using image tracking in order to pick up on those physical cards and then that will kind of decide the environment and then it'll be a little bit more of like a real time rather than a turn based thing so the cards are just going to be kind of what create the environment and that'll allow us to anchor our scene down a little bit more structurally you'll have a lot of anchors that are these cards that are floating around and then that will decide the environment and then the gameplay will be a lot more real time is kind of the idea so i wanted to take a broader look at the project now uh last time you just kind of mentioned some of the player controller aspects um i wanted to kind of bring up how we are formulating the project and then work through the different components that we're going to be looking at today, which are in particular the physics components. And there's some special things when we're considering the physics components, because eventually I do want to see if we can move this to multiplayer. And that means that all of the physics, because we want that to be synced between all of the players, is actually going to be located on the server. So we need to be able to easily remove all of the physics engine from the client and move it to the server, which means that in terms of code splits, we really need it to be a clean split. It'd be very bad if we were not yeah we need we need to make sure that it's messaging between the two so that we have a common message point and that we can change that message point out really easily with a server so that's something that we're going to be keeping in mind while we are coding this up so this is an entity component system and so today we're going to focus on the components that are involved with collision so so the first component that we're going to look at is the spawner component and this has to do with what happens when we load in our object and so we want to be able to build out our physics component from our rendered component and so that's why we spent so much time trying to get the object and quaternion positions correct in Blender so that this part is very easy. So we basically just have to loop over and traverse our object. And as we are doing that, we can get the positions and the rotations of all of the objects and get the global positions and then move those into our collider. So we're doing that by adding them all to a list and then pushing that list to a rigid body component. So we're basically gathering all the information up and then sending it away. And in the rigid body component, we will be separating out these arrays and then rebuilding the objects with the sizes and the quaternions and the positions. And so that allows us to keep that information separated. So there's a few things that we have to add with other colliders too. So we have to give the player
collider collider so we're just going to be using a capsule collider we also want to isolate it so that the physics engine is completely separate from the rendering component because eventually we might want to move the physics component onto a server but the rendering component needs to stay on the system there's also some things that we have to do with some of the texturing so uh blender we does a lot of the texturing for us but there's a few things that 3gs kind of handles a little bit differently in particular in relation to shadows that we are going to have to look at because blender uses kind of ray casting and it has its own engines um whereas 3gs kind of does its shadows a little bit differently so also using something kind of similar to ray casting but it's a little bit more generic so um yeah I have been working on the trajectories of arrows, but uh, so far it's a little bit, and I've also been adding in some stuff to get like an enemy system working out, but the I've been running into a little bit more physics problems than I was expecting because the engine, it just isn't, me and the engine are not getting along in terms of what I expect to happen versus what it expects to happen. I spent like over a day because I thought that mass negative one would be a static seed, when in reality it's mass zero is a static seed. Basically it's just a bunch of things that uh, I've been having trouble with in terms of of me assuming things about the engine and then it kind of disagreeing. 